Hi everyone, this is Azure Yoshi and I'm going to be doing something different for a change. I am now delving into the world of RPG Maker MZ tutorials. So I'm starting off with something that's not exactly super basic, but something that I was personally really interested in learning how to figure out how to do in the engine and I'm sure a bunch of other people are. So I figured I'd make a tutorial about it so y'all can learn about doing action commands. So I've got a basic action command set up here. I'm in a test encounter, so I'm just going to sort of show you what it looks like before I go into the code to explain what's going on. So you just sort of press the button. The goal is to press up at the right time and you'll get extra TP. So I'll, I'll let it play once just so you can sort of see what it does. So you see that an up arrow sort of appeared and if you press up while that arrow is appearing, you get the little bonus and you get the lim extra 20 limit points but you can just sort of let it, you, you don't press the button in time, you don't get the limit. So that's the difference between the timed attack versus the not timed attack, and it's possible to customize that effect. That was just sort of my way to test like, is this actually working or not? And there's also like the miss if you end up missing the timed hit versus the nice if you hit the timed hit. So I'll go ahead and sort of start showing off what that code looks like. So first things first, we'll go into the database. I'll sort of show off the skill. So I've got, I've just got a simple thing called action command. It gives a description, press up at the right time and you'll get extra TP. I just have it set as a physical attack. Just give it a static amount of damage. You can customize that however you want. I just wanted something that was predictable while I was doing this. You'll notice here that I have this note tag called custom action sequence. So for that, you will want to make sure you have a couple of plugins from Viju Stella. The first one you'll want is the core engine and you will want battle core. This is how you can set up action sequences. And this helps to sort of get just the timed attack going. I'm sure you can find a workaround without having this, but if you want your character to just sort of walk up nice and hit without any major trouble, you'll make sure you have at least these. If you want, if you want the effect to be like particularly nifty, there are some like action sequence enhancements. So that you can also purchase from them. I think it's like, yeah, you have like action sequence camera, action sequence impact and action sequence projectiles, which you'll sort of see how you could potentially use those when I sort of show off the common event. But if you want to make it look like really fancy, you can make use of those. Anyway, you want to have those plugins so that you can actually have the custom action sequence go and it runs the whole the action command. So you'll notice here I'm calling a common event and by calling this common event and having this note tag of custom action sequence you can get the command to actually run. So let's go take a look at the common events needed to get this done. So first things first, for, there's going to be two common events basically that you need in order to get it to work. First one I've called just count frames. It's a parallel event. If you don't know what a parallel event is, like it's sort of, you can see the description here. If you don't set a trigger, it'll just run when you call it. Auto run basically just means it's just going to run continuously with, and player input is not allowed. You don't want to set it to auto run. You'll want to set it to parallel for this to work properly. And I've got a switch here just set up called count frames just to make sure it's not constantly running in the background. So, I mean, I've got like game started, cutscene started. You can just have count frames, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't particularly matter. I, you just want to switch so that this isn't going in the background nonstop. And, you'll, and what you'll want to see is, what you're curious to see is call to action command. So you'll see here that the plugin I was referring to, like the Visu Stella Battle Core, that's what helps you do this action sequence. And if you aren't familiar with action sequences, there are just a few different steps you have to follow in order to get them to work. This first one is called set up the action set. Basically, you have to run this first for the action command, to, for the action sequence to run. So you want to make sure you just have this to start. So you'll notice here I've got this vari control variable called time in frames. So if you just open it up, I've just created created that to measure 
how much time has passed for when you press in the action command. And I just sort of, I, set, I make sure to iterate it here at zero so that it doesn't automatically have like a leftover number somehow strangely when it runs into this command. So I just put it here at the very beginning of this common event as a sanity check. You'll see here, I put on count frames for the common event count frames. I just named them the same thing. I'm like, turn on count frames. So like if I call this common event, it'll actually run in parallel. So this next step is for action sequences. So you'll notice when I ran the when I ran the act when I ran the action command, like the like the character moved up to the target before the arrow appeared. So that was just me moving the character over. It's got a bunch of fancy commands into involved. Basically, it took 30 frames to get there. It determined how far to get. It it approached the current target, which was one enemy. And you can and it's, and it's set to wait for movement. So that means that the, the, it's going to move first before the rest of this common event runs. The next thing is I show a picture. So I've got it so it shows an animated picture. It doesn't have to be an animated picture. It's basically what all I was just showing was an up arrow. That's not that difficult to set up, I'm hoping, but I'll just sort of show it. So I've got this image. You just load it into, I think, your characters folder. I've got it, like I said, this one I've got set up to be animated so it like hovers up a little bit, but you can just set it up so it just like calls a singular image. I've placed a direct designation on the map. I'm sure you can get fancy with it and have it like appear right above the character if you really want to. I just wanted it to be somewhere where it was easily visible. And because the arrow I have is so small, I just sort of cranked up the width and height a little bit. So yeah, that's just sort of how I got the image to show to sort of indicate, yeah, you should press up. Okay, so this next thing here is, you'll see that I've got a label set up called check again. Labels are really convenient <laughs> for jumping back into previous parts of your code. So this base, by having this label in here and being able to jump back to it later, this basically means, oh, if the player doesn't like hit a frame perfect, pressing up a frame perfect, they still have a chance to get it. Cause you'll see here, like I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to get, I'm giving them 60 frames. Like, so they have a second to hit the button. You don't put this label here and allow them to loop back. You're basically expecting them to get it like perfectly. So give, make sure you give player a chance to do it. So now you see here for this next step, I'm actually calling my common event count frame. So now it's going to be starting to iterate the time and frames variable. And you'll see here as it starts to count, it's like you've got 60 seconds basically to hit the up button for the action command to be successful. So what's basically happening is it'll check like, okay, as have less than 60 seconds passed. If you understand conditionals, this is probably relatively straightforward. Next step is, so we're using scripts. I know it's a, it's a little bit fancy, but so it's this basically the script is like checking input that is triggered up. So basically what this means is it's just going to detect like, have you pushed the up button within this time frame? Now you'll, you'll probably see here there's, there's a button. So you can be like, well, why not? Why are we not doing up is being pressed? So you can, if you do up is being pressed, the player, like as soon as you, as soon as they click the attack button, they can just hold the up button and then they immediately win the action command. So you have to do a little bit of a workaround and that's why we're using the script input is triggered that up. You can also set it to be other things. Like you can set it to be anything that's here. It doesn't have to be up. You can set it to be right, left, down, which whatever floats your boat. But I'd call calling a script here makes it so that you just can't cheese the action command. So what happens if a player ends up pressing up within the appropriate time frame? Well, the arrow picture that was showing, it'll disappear. So this is just sort of calling the text pop-up when I was showing off, which we saw before was showing off nice. So it means it just a sort of a visual indicator that like, yes, he succeeded. Just a wait command so it doesn't, everything doesn't run immediately. Perform the action, show the animation, the 50 damage is done. And this is like the little bit of a bonus. So I was saying like, oh, if you succeeded, you'll get a bonus. So I just set it here to something simple like, okay, your, your TP goes up by 20. And it just sort of like, do you get a damage pop up? You can show if it shows up or not. 
But yeah, you can also mess it. You can also make it so like, oh, you do more damage, or you recover MP, or you attack the enemy's MP. You can get really creative with what bonus you end up giving, and there's many other like possibilities too. Like you can give yourself like a, you can change your state, and probably a bunch of other things I'm not even aware of. You can get creative with how you want to do it. So, so that's what happens if you succeed. You'll notice here that there's an there's an else, like jumping to label. So that's what brings you back to this step and allows you to not have to do it frame perfect. It'll jump back up to that point and just sort of run really quickly to make sure to give you an opportunity to press up to activate the action command. I tried doing it in like a while loop. It caused a lot of lag, so I recommend doing it this way. There probably is another way you can do it, but so far I found this way to be effective enough. But then there's also this, so also, if you get past, if you if you go past 60 seconds, you saw that like the miss showed up when I was showing off the tutorial. So that's what happens if you hit else. That's basically what happens if, oh, your time in frames, like it, you go greater than 60, the, the arrow still goes away. We pull, we, the text becomes miss. So we show the attack animation and we apply the effect, but we don't give any sort of bonus. And then you're sort of done with this loop. And after we're done with this loop, we turn off count in frames because we've done our action command. We don't need to count it anymore. And we reset time in frames equal to zero so that if you want to rerun this with multiple characters, it doesn't already start off being at like 60 something. I probably double put this in twice, but with something like this, you want to make sure it's at zero. And then this just sort of is a command for action sequence to sort of reset everything, and to let the flow of battle continue. So that's sort of an overview of how the action command works. Again, this is just a very basic example. There's, You can make this a lot more complicated. You can have it so you have to chain action commands together. But hopefully this gives like a good framework to sort of understand like how you can set up your own action commands when you're using RPG Maker. So. Let me know if you've got any questions. This is my first RPG Maker tutorial, and I've started with something fairly advanced, so hopefully I've covered all the bases enough for you to understand how it works. Thanks for watching, and let me know if you want to see more of these. Have a good day, guys.